Good morning and welcome to Wake Up with Marcy and Hillary. We have an incredible lineup of guests and topics that are sure to inspire and inform. I love, love, love the opportunity to have these guests on. They are incredible. I know. First up, we have Eve Goldberg, the founder of Big Vision Community. Eve is going to share with us her personal story of losing her son to an accidental drug overdose and how she turned her tragedy into a mission of helping other young adults find safe, sober fun through her organization, Big Vision. Next, we have Olivia Verhust, a licensed psychotherapist and perinatal certified mental health provider. Olivia will be discussing the importance of improving communication and helping you through navigating difficult topics or simply enhancing your communication skills. Joining us next is Sir James Gray Robinson, the CEO of Awakening Mastery. Sir James will be sharing his expertise on achieving the body you have always wanted. With his five-step approach, he will guide us on the journey to physical transformation and overall well-being. And finally, we have Michelle Fontaine Jones, the CEO, founder of Curls and Potions, and COO Quentin R. Weems. Michelle and Quentin will be getting personal as they discuss self-care and overall wellness, including Michelle's own personal hair journey. Eve, thank you so much for coming on Wake Up and sharing your story. Marcy, thank you so much for having me here today. Your son Isaac passed away from an accidental overdose in January of 2014. Can you share with us his story his struggles, and how that impacted you? First of all, Sunday was actually 10 years since he passed away. So it's kind of a crazy milestone, I guess you would say. Um, So Isaac was 23 years old when he passed away, and he struggled for years Mm -hmm. with trying to stay sober, trying to be in recovery, and it was just such a challenge for him. From when he was a little boy, he had, he always had issues, whether he, it was ADD or he had a little bit of OCD, and he was a great kid, happy, fun, funny, good looking, like everything about him was great, but he never really loved himself from when he was a little kid, because he always felt a little bit different from the other kids. So he got into drugs, when he went to college actually maybe late late in high school but when he went to college and it was it just overtook him completely it was like this demon that just took over his brain and he was no longer this isaac that i knew and he overdosed one time a couple of years before that and he was in in and out of treatment which is very normal for people who are trying to be in recovery it's not always like one and done Mm -hmm. and in 2014, he overdosed. This was six months after I got married. He was actually at my wedding with a sober friend. We kind of did everything right, so we thought. But after that, he just went down this path of, you know, starting to drink again, starting to do drugs. And he really didn't want that because he always told me, I never want to go there again. I never want to go to that dark place. Mm -hmm. But once he went there, there was no turning back. There's no turning back. As of 2023, I believe there were over 109,000 accidental drug overdoses. So, so many families are struggling out there. What would you say to the families, to the mothers, some inspiration or some kind of help that they could seek? What can they do? Well, the first thing I tell parents who call me whose child is struggling, I say, what are you doing for yourself? Mm -hmm. Because honestly, there's only so much that you can do for a young person unless they want to get better, or for anybody. Anybody. Unless they want to get better themselves, it's very hard to force them. So I, I I see these parents and they are at their wits end. And I know because I was there with Isaac, I mean, it's very, very frustrating and very difficult and very painful to be living with someone who's in active addiction. He's even trying to to stay sober. And so one of the things I say is always get help for yourself. Find a good support group. That's Mm -hmm. number one. Mm -hmm. And talk to your child. Make sure that there's an open communication there, that they know that they can come to you, that they're not 
going to feel ashamed or embarrassed to talk to you about this subject. Right. Always really important to open up the lines of uh, conversation and to get help for yourself because educating yourself on what's available out there mm -hmm. is it's such a priority and such an important thing to do for yourself. So you had this tragedy. How did you turn it around for yourself? Well, for me, you never know what kind of person you're going to be. When Isaac passed away, I mean, I, I remember this one scene in my head that always plays out is that when I got to the funeral home and I was in the back of the car and my husband was trying to get me out of the car, I couldn't move. I was frozen. I said, I can't do this. Mm -hmm. I can't. I can't be going to my son's funeral. Like, that makes absolutely no sense. How am I going to even do this? Right. And, and then, you know, I come from a family of very strong women and strong people, and it's like you have to go on with your life. That's always what I was taught. You know, yeah. bad things happen and you have to keep putting one foot in front of the other and move forward. And I woke up one day and I said to my husband, I know what I want to do. And he said, what do you mean? Like, you have a job, you, you do something every day. I said, no, no, I, I know what I want to do yeah. to honor Isaac's life. And mm -hmm. so I came up with this idea of big vision because I felt for Isaac, the one thing he was really lacking amongst many things was having this community. Yeah. So I said, I'm going to create a space where we have a safe space for young adults in recovery who Amazing. are, are like-minded and are trying to live better lives, trying yeah. to better themselves and, so and finding enjoy purpose, their lives. Finding purpose through this. So tell us about Big Vision. You have a big project going on in Manhattan. Yep. And for all those out there, what is happening, what are you offering, and when is it opening? Well, yeah, it's very exciting. <laughs> this was the dream from day one. When I said to my husband, like, I want to open this space, and he kind of looked at me like, okay, whatever, we'll see. And we looked for a space for years, and we were rejected by many, many people, many landlords, because they didn't want our kind of people there. No matter how much I tried to convince them that these are people not throwing wild parties, it's quite the opposite. They wouldn't, they wouldn't rent their space to us. And we finally found this space that's fantastic. We bought it. It's in Midtown Manhattan. And what Big Vision does is we are a peer support group for young adults in recovery. Mm -hmm. So we help them find passion, in the, find, get back to doing things that they did before just without substances, having fun, finding their passions. And we support them and we do all these fun activities. And not just fun activities, we have programs that help them stay on a on a good track and they get together and it really helps them being part of this community and so now we have the space which is going to be ready in a couple of months uh -huh. you know construction has started and we're going to have all of our activities there we're going to have we have a huge space for sober events we have an outdoor space basketball hoop we're going to do yoga meditation I love it support groups everything you can imagine for absolutely young adults absolutely phenomenal and Right now, you are helping people already with Big Vision. You are, I think you have activities that you do. Mm -hmm. So where can we find you and how can someone get involved? So go on our website. It's bigvisioncommunity.com or bigvisionnyc.com. And we are, all our activities are listed there. Uh, you can see what the new space is going to look like. There's an actual video walkthrough of the new space and all the activities that we do. And if you have people, if you yourself need this help or you have people out there that you know, everybody's been affected by the disease yes. of addiction. Yeah. So if you know somebody in your neighborhood, a friend, a cousin, whatever, tell them about us. Reach out. We have an amazing staff. And, uh, you know, we're, we're there for the sober community. That's There's really help. what we are. There There's is help, help and Absolutely. support. It's just seeking it and finding out and getting educated again. Thank you so much, Eve, for sharing and honestly, the work that you're doing and for being so strong for everyone else. Thanks, Marcy. Thank you. Thanks. Next, we have Olivia Verholst, a licensed psychotherapist and perinatal certified mental health provider. Olivia will be discussing the importance of improving communication and how to have hard conversations with your partner. Then Sir James Gray Robinson, the CEO of Awakening Mastery. Sir James will be sharing his expertise on achieving the body you have always wanted.
Joining us now is Olivia Verholst, licensed psychotherapist and Forbes Health Advisor. Today we are going to speak about improving communication, how to have the hard conversations with your partner. Olivia, this is so important. <laughs> so, Thank you. It's so important. Thanks for being here. <laughs> Thank Why you. is communication such a fundamental aspect of relationship health? I mean, in other words, why should we continue to prioritize this throughout our partnerships? Yes. Well, communication really um, is at the cornerstone of both building and maintaining relationships. So it's not just something that we want to hyper focus on in the beginning or on occasion. It's an all the time thing in partnerships and it's what helps create intimacy, which involves being truly seen and known by another. It also helps us to express um, and to understand our partner's needs. And um, it doesn't necessarily protect us from conflict, but it does help us withstand the inevitable conflict that will come our way in relationships. All right, so let's talk about some of the frequent communication pitfalls yeah. that we face when it comes to these hard conversations. So in my line of work, I am often in one way or another working with relationship dynamics. And a few pitfalls I see as it relates to the hard stuff is avoidance. Um, so quite literally not having the conversation at all or not finishing it, right? Sometimes it does take coming back to the table a few times to finish the conversation, as well as um, shaming and blaming language. Like sometimes we can get into that criticize, uh, criticism area mm -hmm. and Pro tip, we will never shame someone into lasting change. Um, and then lastly, responding from a place of defensiveness over intention. And that looks like listening to respond rather than listening to understand. Mm, so good. It is, and when you start talking about that hard stuff, mm -hmm. You talk about pillars of healthy communication in relationships. Can you tell, tell us more about that? Yeah, I mean, there, there are a few pillars of healthy communication in relationships. Of course, there's so many. It looks a lot of different ways. But as it relates to having those tough conversations, I would say um, active listening is one of those things we always want to be working on. That involves nonverbal cues like our body language. How are we presenting in, in conflict? Um, also, self-awareness over how we show up to mm -hmm. conflict and what our emotional triggers are. So those are those are key. It is a self-awareness. Yeah, when and you the can emotional start to, triggers. We yeah. talked about that this morning. When you start to think about how you are interpreting yeah. right. the conversation. Yeah, yeah, and I'll tell you, I do shut down uh, when mm -hmm. I used to be really bad about this, shutting down and not having the conversation. And then it just builds into resentment. Yeah, yeah so yeah. let's talk about some of the tips Yes. that you can give us for conflict resolution and when we get heated in mm -hmm. the moment. It definitely brought some juicy tips today <laughs> because you're right, resentment can build and kind of, kind of um, build and quietly like erode the foundation of the relationship behind the scenes. So mm -hmm. having these tips can be key. Um, one is, you know, as it relates to conflict, setting the stage if we can before we get into the heated conflict. That can look like, um, Hey, babe, I know that this is a tough conversation for you and I, or it's a sensitive topic. When might be a good time for us to have this conversation? Mm -hmm. um, my partner and I just started doing Saturday morning diner dates, right? That's oh. somewhere where we set the stage and have our relationship check-ins. And um, something else that we can focus on is I statements and my experience is blank. Um, so that can look like, um, you know, I'm having a lot of feelings about the messiness of the house. Can we talk about that? Or my experience of X, Y, and Z is X. Right, we're taking accountability and responsibility for our feelings, not blaming it on mm -hmm. our partner. Mm -hmm. And one of my favorite things to talk about with communication and conflict resolution is the reality is we're all bringing our subjective realities to whatever it is. So if, if the three of us, right, me, Hillary, and Marcy are watching a movie, the same movie, we're all going to have a different subjective, unique experience of that mm -hmm. movie, yeah. that's part of the beauty of the human condition. So that's happening in conflict too. So yeah. remembering that our partner and partners, de depending on what type of relationship we're in, that we're all bringing our unique lens to situations, yeah. that's going to be really something to remember. Yeah, our perception, how we hear things yeah. is different than maybe how it's intended, right? Like yeah. everyone does hear something different. Yes. Olivia, thank you so much for coming on thank Wake you. Up. Like, thank she's you. She's so amazing. Uh, and it's no longer, we always are taught we, but yeah. this is the I part. Take ownership for the I. Yes, yes. 
wonderfully said. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you so Thank much, you. Olivia, again, for coming Olivia, on Wake you. Up I'm with so Marcy grateful. and Hillary. And just tell us real quick, where can we find you? You can find me at Let's Talk Psychological Wellness in New York City on the website and on my Psychology Today profile. Fantastic. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Joining us now is Sir James Gray Robinson, CEO of Awakening Mastery. Welcome to Wake Up. Welcome. Thank you. So great to have you and meet you in person. Oh, this is a dream come true. <laughs> well, well, we want to thank you for being a contributor to Wake Up, and you are going to be helping so many because you are like an expert in so many areas, and we're going to be talking about weight loss and today, fitness and looking our best. So Today we're going to be excited. talking about your top three New Year's resolutions. And one of the top is to lose weight. And people are really struggling in staying motivated. What are the factors contributing to the increased obesity rates in our population? Food. <laughs> the problem is, is that our, nutritionally the food that most people eat is actually toxic. Mm. And if you understand how our body deals with toxicity, it puts on fat because the fat absorbs the toxic stuff that we're eating. And it's actually to help us survive. But the problem is you're not going to lose that fat if you keep eating the toxic food. And by toxic, I mean anything that comes in a box, anything that comes out of a window, anything that's been processed, because all those chemicals that are in there uh, are poisonous. Mm -hmm. And the uh, food lobby, the animal protein lobbies, the uh, fast food lobbies have actually had a lot of influence on the FDA so that the FDA says that stuff is good for you. And right. it's not. Right. So, so what is good for us? If it's green, if it's red, if it's fresh, okay. I can promise you that it's good for you. If it's, you know, if you cook it yourself, mm -hmm. then it's probably okay. So let's talk about the weight loss products that are out there. I mean, that's a huge industry. Do they work? Well... For short term. The problem with it is, is that a lot of those things are placebos. Because if you look at the ingredients that are in them, there's absolutely nothing in them that will actually cause weight loss. Mm -hmm. But if you believe that they will cause weight loss, then you will lose weight. Mm -hmm. But then if you don't change all the underlying factors that cause you to gain weight in the first place, it's going to come back on. And a lot of times it come, more comes back on yes, than sir. when you do it. So you can buy all the gummies you want and you might lose some weight, but check back in a year and see what you weigh. So this is, this is really a mindset thing. Exactly. And I love what you say. What comes out of your mouth is more important than what goes into it. So explain more about that. What you're saying is kind of a reflection of what you're thinking and what is a reflection of what you believe because we have this what a lot of people call a subconscious mind which is like 90 percent of our brain activity and that harbors all our memories all our beliefs and cognitive bias and so if you actually pay attention to what you're saying it, it will give you a clue of what's going on in your subconscious mind and that way you can tell whether you believe that you should be fit and healthy or whether you believe uh, that you are a loser or a failure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so watch what you say yeah. and you'll be able to tell whether or not you have healthy thoughts mm -hmm. because you can either think negatively or you can think positively. And you, we all know those people that are negative yeah. because of what they say. And if you pay attention to what you're saying, you'll be able to tell whether you're in a positive mood or a negative mood. Thank, Thank you, you so in. much for coming on and sharing this information. So how can we find out more? Just go to my website, uh, jamesgrayrobinson.com, and you will fall down the rabbit hole, and you will find out a lot of things you didn't know. And so, because uh, I have hundreds of articles I've written nine books. One just got an International Book Award. Wow. Uh, so it's... Uh, Tell us the name. It's called Thriving in the Legal Arena. It's for 
uh, lawyers who are stressed out, but it applies to everybody. Mm -hmm. And so stress it's, is stress. And yeah. I've also got a new movie coming out that's premiering uh, January the 26th in, in Los Angeles called uh, Beyond Physical Matter, mm -hmm. which, and you can go to beyondphysicalmatter.com. And this is all about where medicine is going, where nutrition is going and you'll be able to find out what's next. That's so important. So interesting. Education, power, power, power. Yeah. Thank you again for coming it. on the show. Well, thank you, thank ladies. You this has been a dream come true, and thank you for all you're doing. After the break, we meet Michelle Fontaine Jones, the CEO founder of Curls and Potions, and Quentin R. Weems, the COO. Michelle and Quentin will be getting personal as they discuss self-care and overall wellness. Joining us is Michelle Fontaine Jones, the CEO and founder of Curls and Potions, and COO Quinton Weems. Welcome, guys. Hi. Hi. I'm so, so excited to be you. here. Thanks Thank for you for us. coming on Wake Up. So, can you share with us the story behind Curls and Potions? What inspired you to start on this journey? Well. Uh, I started Curls and Potions after my mother was diagnosed with metastatic breast cancer mm. and she was struggling with wanting to take chemotherapy because she didn't want to lose her hair. Yeah. So I went ahead and after watching her realizing how much hair means to us, how it's our journey in life, it's part of our, our triumphs, our struggles, our pain. And I wanted to create products to help her hair grow back faster, yeah. but I wanted to make sure that I used ingredients that were good for you holistically. Can you share more about what are those ingredients that you put into your products? Some of the interesting ingredients that we use, we use butterfly pea powder, uh, dragon fruit powder, we have henna, any type of Ayurvedic herb that you can think of we use in all of our products. And we come up with different concoctions that is based off of different cultures all over the world. Wow. Yeah, so tell us who are your products helping and what types of products do you have? Honestly, our products, even though with the name Curls and Potions, um, it originally started because the textured hair movement was going on. Mm -hmm. However, it's for anybody. We mm -hmm. say, if you have a head, you're our customer, because we even have products for bald heads. Huh? So we really just want to focus on healthy hair and scalp care. Yeah. That's the foundation of everything. And it doesn't matter what your texture is, how you want to style your hair, whether it's curly, you want to blow it out, you have uh -huh. waves, doesn't matter, it works for everybody. Well, and I think we all have hair challenges, right? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. But let's talk about the biggest challenge, being an entrepreneur. How do you face being an entrepreneur every day? You would take when? That? It's, it's <laughs> extremely difficult. Um, entrepreneurs face many different challenges. The biggest one I would say is definitely access to capital. A lot of times, the difference between a large um, corporation, uh, household name, so to speak, and a mom and pop store is just the access to capital. Not necessarily the service or the products that they provide, but just simply access to funding. Mm -hmm. Definitely wow. the hardest part of being an entrepreneur. Yeah, it's difficult to be an entrepreneur. I mean, you have to wear so many hats. And you're really trying to help people and get your brand out there. And you are making a difference. That is your mission mm -hmm. to help others. And thank you for sharing such a beautiful story about your mother and that that inspired you to create Curls and Potions. But let's talk about some hair trends now, <laughs> some, some fun stuff. What are you seeing and how do your products help with these new trends? Oh my God, bangs are back, okay? Everybody's loving the fringe bang. Uh-huh. Uh, no, lots of layers. say it's not yes, true. Yes, it's true, it's true. <laughs> I hate to say it, but it's true. Lots of layers. The waves, like you have the waves, people are blowing their ha hair out more. Uh -huh. um, Which means they that. need your product Absolutely. Exactly. more. Exactly, it's very damaging. Absolutely, and you're seeing a lot of bobs. Mm -hmm. um, pigtails surprisingly okay. even for adults uh -huh. uh, that's a little shocking 
And as far as like hair care products and mm -hmm. what people should focus on is scalp care. Mm. Big deal. And looking for ingredients that you see in high end skin care, you're going to start finding in hair care, which is something we've been doing way before this was a trend. So you but, have that in curls and potions. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. So tell us where we can find your products. You can find our products on our website at curlsandpotions.com. We're on amazon.com and walmart.com. Thank you so much thank for coming so much, on Wigs with Marcy and Hillary and continued success. Oh, thank you thank so you, much. Thank you. you guys have been wonderful. If you go to curlsandpotions.com, type in Wake Up 20, you will receive 20% off of your order. Thank you all so much for tuning in to Wake Up with Marcy and Hillary today. I mean, you could be watching anything, but you joined us and we had a really powerful show today. It really was. It impacted both of us, mm -hmm. and I'm sure all of the listeners out there are gonna have some massive takeaways. So if you wanna learn more about today's guests, please go to wakeupwithmarcyandhillary.com. Stay in touch with us on social media during the week, please. We are constantly trying to inspire, and of course, you can keep up with the show. Thank you again for tuning in. And remember to be kind to yourself and to others. And wake up to all of your possibilities. See you next Saturday.